and in the very way he's looking his illness in the eye, he's embodying one part of the case against religion. Leave it to the religious to mule and whimper at the feet of an imaginary deity in their fear of death. Leave it to them to spend their lives in denial of its reality. Hitch is looking it squarely in the eye, not denying it, not giving in to it, but facing up to it, squarely and honestly, and with a courage that inspires us all. Before his illness, it was as an erudite author and essayist, a sparkling, devastating speaker, that this valiant horseman led the charge against the follies and lies of religion. Since his illness, he's added another weapon to his armory and ours, perhaps the most formidable and powerful weapon of all. His very character has become an outstanding and unmistakable symbol of the honesty and dignity of atheism, as well as of the worth and dignity of the human being when not debased by the infantile babblings of religion. Every day, he's demonstrating the falsehood of that most squalid of Christian lies, that there are no atheists in foxholes. Hitch is in a foxhole, and he's dealing with it with a courage and honesty and a dignity that any of us would be and should be proud to be able to muster. And in the process, he's showing himself to be even more deserving of our admiration, respect, and love. I was asked to honor Christopher Hitchens today. I need hardly say that he does me the far greater honor by accepting this award in my name. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades, I give you Christopher Hitchens. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and I did promise Richard that if, if, I, if my voice didn't go to rags, I would try and speak to you a bit, if that's all right. In, in acknowledgement, but I do so acutely aware that I'm the one standing between you and the Saturday night fever, and the bars and the entertainments and so forth, and also we have a Q&A, we hope. So I'll be terse. As far as it lies within my power, I once got involved through no fault of my own in a presidential impeachment in Washington. But you may remember we had to learn a lot about a woman called Jennifer Flowers. Do you recall? Yes. Name spelled with a G. Bertrand, Bertrand Worcester, P.G. Woodhouse's great hero, said, always beware of women who spell Gladys with a W. Or, Anything, like, anyway, heedless of this, the president plunged on. In the, in the course of this, I had to discover about her that she'd once entered a Marilyn Monroe lookalike contest and had come forth. You may picture, therefore, comrades, my emotions at receiving not just the Richard Dawkins Prize, but the Richard Dawkins Prize from his own hands. against uh, theocracy and 
the Odyssey, if you will, and all the rest of them. And because groups like that tend to need a nickname, I'm very rather unfortunately got called the Four Horsemen. I have to plead partly guilty now myself, I thought I'd better come up with something before anyone else did. And it was supposed to be the four horsemen of the counter-apocalypse. <laughs> but there it is, we got settled with it, and of course, long may this illusion flourish. It's promoted me to parity with Professors Dawkins and Dennis and Sam Harris. And I have set my whole life, I'd like to think, against the spread of delusion rather wish this one a fair wind. It's rather nice to be uh, associated in that, in that uh, company. It is true, however, that if we hadn't done it, someone was going to. There was going to have to be some kind of a pushback against what we could see coming. It was going to be a volunteer effort. It was going to communicate itself that way. How else were we going to reply to the increasing menace, rising menace of Islamic Jihad. How are we going to, uh, for example, deal with the emergence of probably the most reactionary papacy since the mid-19th century? Um, how, how are we going, excuse me, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I have to cough for a little bit. <coughs> I was afraid this would happen, I, I do terribly apologize. Um, a very reactionary Eastern Orthodox Church, if it comes to that, as well, the Eastern, the Eastern Catholic forces. Thank you. Um, now arranged, many of them, behind the dark and sinister figure of Vladimir Putin. Uh, then one mustn't exempt, of course, the millennial settlers in Palestine who believe that by bringing in as many fanatics of Jewish origin as they can, and forcing out as many Palestinian Arabs as they can, they may bring on the Messiah and indeed the apocalypse and look forward to the common destruction of our species with relish. And this, I think there's a special responsibility upon us, uh, uh, particularly because the backers of these people tend to be in the United States. And though many of them don't like the Jewish people, and have uh, no love for um, all those who haven't accepted Jesus as their personal savior, they nonetheless are prepared to support extreme Jews, rather as the rope used to support the hanging man, make use of him while he brings on the Messiah, and then our reign of tribulation can begin too. What a wonderful bargain to be offering a democratic uh, country. Um, Richard is sometimes accused, you've heard it, of being overstrident. Before my voice went, I sometimes got accused of it too. <laughs> it's, um, it's a bit more reasonable in my case. I'm a sort of street-fighting polemicist from way back. I ask for it and I get it and I can dish it out. Richard is the defender of a great discipline, a wonderful discipline in biology with revolutionary and transformative power in the way we think, in our attitudes to medicine, into our attitudes to our origins, and to finding out how beautiful and rare and wonderful, even miraculous, reality really is when we look it in the face. How should he not be strident to see his discipline being attacked and defamed, to see attempts being made to drive it out of the academy, to have the uh, pseudo-scientific garbage taught now under the rubric of equal time. In the old days, the fundamentalists, if they could ban something, did ban it, as the Scopes trial proved. Losing that battle, they decided to go for equal time and American way fairness. Now they want it to be a sort of civil liberties and free speech issue. They've even got President Bush at one point to say, let's teach the debate. Well, by all means, let's teach the debate. But only in history class, or perhaps in civics. What we're not going to have is, well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the chemistry period. Be ready for alchemy when you come back after the break. <laughs> <laughs>